You never quite know when your boat's gonna take off and go on a joyride without you. Kind of like this person found out this past week when he fell overboard and his boat went off and had a joyride without him. Fortunately, he was picked up by a good Samaritan vessel for a good save, just like some of the good saves we'll see in this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. Our first story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to the port of Dakar, where this was the scene this past week, where the Princess Jessica was moored alongside a pier when all of a sudden an arriving bulker came in and wound up colliding with the vessel, and the next thing we know, the Princess Jessica, as seen in the images, winds up capsizing and sinking right at the dock. According to reports released by port officials, the vessel that caused the incident is the Zografia, which is a Greek-owned vessel that actually wound up surviving a Houthi missile attack several months back. The Dakar Port Authority did release an official statement claiming that the incident resulted in no loss of life and they do believe swift actions are being taken and they will actually have the Princess Jessica refloated fairly quickly. They did not issue any statement on as to the cause of the incident, only that it's under investigation at this time to try and determine what exactly happened between the two vessels to cause this to occur. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us up to Massachusetts where this was the scene actually just a a few days ago where a man went out for a day of fishing when all of a sudden things went wrong his vessel wound up capsizing so fast he couldn't even get to his phone or life jacket before it happened fortunately for the gentleman two friends were actually out fishing off the southwest cape near monomy island and wound up coming across the gentleman sitting on top of the hull of his vessel as seen in the images here fortunately for this gentleman the boys of island explorers were on the scene to help rescue him they said as they approached they initially thought that it was a dead whale in the water until they got close enough to see there was a man sitting on top of it they quickly were able to get him a life jacket and contact the coast guard to get additional help brought out to the scene once the two got the man to safety on their boat, he began to tell him his story, claiming that it all happened so fast he wasn't 100% sure exactly what happened when the boat capsized, but that he had been sitting on top of the capsized vessel for close to an hour, and several other boats had passed, but unfortunately he was unsuccessful in flagging them down, and he was very thankful to the diligent eye of his rescuers. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Hawaii, where this was the scene off the island of Kauai just a few days ago, when a local high school kayak team was out practicing a run between Alawai Boat Harbor and Diamond Head when all of a sudden on their return back they realized one of their teammates had gone missing. They quickly called local authorities alerting them to a missing person in the water and crews jumped into action with a search and rescue mission to try and find the high school student who was missing on the kayak. The initial report came out at 6.30 p.m. that the kayaker was missing. Eventually around 4.30 a.m. the Coast Guard spotted the kayaker in the water and was able to alert a good Samaritan vessel who was participating in the search exactly where he was located so they could go over and rescue the team. After the rescue, the kayaker shared his story claiming that he was out there battling rough seas and current when all of a sudden the kayak capsized and he wound up losing his paddle and he did his best just to stay calm until rescuers could get to him. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to the coast of Washington where this was the scene just a little over a week ago when the Coast Guard rescued five people from the 130 foot commercial tug vessel Luther after it lost steering off the coast. But let's listen in on how this one unfolded. Doug Luther from the Coast Guard, Roger, Captain, understand. And uh, are you drifting towards land right now, over? Seven miles off, seven miles off the coast. Seven miles off the Puglia River. Coast Guard, this is Luther. We are going down. We are going down. We're abandoning the ship. Coast Guard, this is uh, Luther. Uh, we come with our barge. Uh, we're trying to maintain the situation here. We have not abandoned your ship. Luther from the Coast Guard. Roger, Captain. I understand you're still on your ship and you've abandoned your barge. Over. Yes, we have jumped our barge. Oh, we still have no steering. Trying to keep uh, stay afloat in this weather. Roger, Captain. If you need to do so, please get into the life raft and take the e with you. Over. Roger, right, that way. At this moment, we're maintaining water tight integrity. And uh, we're staying on the tug. Roger, Captain. Understand. Station Quillute River will be on scene momentarily. Over. Coast Guard vessel, tug with her. Tug with her, Coast Guard. Go ahead, Captain. Do you want us to set up a, a tow line, or are you going to shoot us a tow line, or what's the plan once you guys get on scene? Tug Luther from the Coast Guard, Roger Captain, stand by. Our 47 will make contact with you shortly. Do you have visual on them? 
We have him on our electronic chart only. Uh, visibility is about two miles out here. Now, obviously, the footage we're showing here is dramatized a little bit, as nobody was there to record, but the audio is real. The Coast Guard did wind up rescuing all five people off the Luther. There was a little drama in it, as one of the people from the Luther wound up falling in the water before being brought on board the Coast Guard vessel. But eventually, several hours after the incident, another crew was able to go back out, hook up to the Luther, and tore it back into shore. Our next story to make the boating news this week, well, that's going to be us. That's right, Flibs is just around the corner, and we will be attending Flibs, hosting our annual seminar on how to take your boat to the Bahamas. We'll be at the convention center, hosting our seminar Friday, November 1st at 2 p.m. at the seminar booth, and then again Saturday, November 2nd at 5.30 p.m., again over at the convention center at the seminar booth located there, as they will have two places this year hosting seminars, one over at the Super Yacht Village, and again, one at the convention center, so make sure you go to the one at the convention center. And if you've ever thought about taking your boat to the Bahamas, we're gonna show you how easy it is for you to be able to do that, and also give you the opportunity to possibly join us on one of our trips this coming year. Thanks for watching, crew. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Boating News of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening out on your waterways, be sure to hit us up on Facebook or Instagram and let us know, and you might see your stories over here. Just like Island X Lures, Picasso West, and Adam Coolidge did this week. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here.